Welcome to episode 10 of my building the HMS Victory. I've made some progress. You'll see I have one cannon sticking out a porthole. I have those. I have the angular pieces that I mentioned in the last video. I've positioned masts and yards. Crow's nests. None of the masts or yards are actually glued in place. They're tied in place. But you can tell I've made some progress. So let me show you how I got to this point. I had mentioned in the previous episode that I had not put these little angular pieces in there. So they're in place now. I had a little gap behind them. So before I put them in, I fill that gap and all that is a piece of um, rope string I'll show you what it is in just a minute that I coated in um, gold paint and then use that kind of as a caulking I suppose to fill that little gap I've used it on other ships that technique what I do I have a variety of strings that are different thicknesses very fine, medium, and quite heavy. And that's what I use to coat in gold. Gold paint, that is. Although, I have purchased some gold leaf that is 23 karat gold. It's not the artificial gold that I'm going to use on my next building project. As a teaser, there's the beginnings of what my next project will be. This is what I do as far as trying to glue these cannons together as small as they are. I leave the two bases connected so that uh, I have even pairs and if you look closely on the side that goes outwards the wheels have a little center hub carved into it even though you'll put wheels on top of that but I want that nice flat surface. Then, this is the piece that holds the, the cannon itself. This is one of those critical things that if there's a little nub on it, it won't fit in smoothly. And with these small pieces, you need everything smooth. From what I can tell, the largest angle of these goes towards the lowest down slant of the base. And if you work on wax paper, the super glue doesn't stick to it very well. And then just between where the wheels are, I put a little bit of super glue. This is where those magnifying glasses can come in handy. I'll try and do it without holding it down. Get it to the spot you want and hold it for about 10 seconds. Now I'll let that dry, then I'll separate the two. Actually I've got one up here that's been drying for a while, I think I can do that. So let me switch. Now I can separate. And I've got one of those nasty nubs back here. And then because I have those little white marks on the back, this is where I take magic marker to cover those. Now what I'll do is with that flat, I'm going to start on the other side to let that side start to dry a little. Now is when I will attach the wheels so that they can actually contact the ground in case I'm not flat. The larger wheel goes towards the inside of the ship and the little tiny one goes where the barrel will be pointing forward. Not the proper size, but you get the idea. So that's how the cannon sits. The large wheel goes back here, the small one up front. With this, sometimes it's better to use 
regular glue instead of super glue because I want to put this on. These also have a little round etching on the outside. Okay, and I have a little regular glue up there. What's almost impossible is getting these little nubs off the wheels because they are so tiny. I've decided I'm going to remake cannons. I've got some smaller dowels, so I'm going to make them a little smaller. So there's an example. And all I can say is, happy cannon making. This is an extreme close-up to give you an idea, and that's the cannon that came with the ship. Obviously, it would need to be stained or colorized in some way and maybe sand it up a little bit. So in comparing the cannons, if I work just a little harder and maybe take off a little bit that very end piece, if I were to sand that off, I prefer the handmade cannons over the one with the kit. The brass that I used on the masts, or on the yards, I don't want to be shiny brass. So what I use is a product called Novocaine black patina maybe that's nova can but it's uh for solder and lead like uh oh stained glass windows and they do the framing it'll darken the solder and i just lightly brushed it on and you can see how it's darkening the brass takes just a few minutes and if there's any coating on the brass you'll need to rub that off. Now this is the brass that I smacked with a hammer so I think that should take care of it. Keep in mind that it is a, uh, it's an acid based product so you'll want to uh, read and follow the label instructions. You'll notice the ones on the right are quite a bit darker. They've actually turned black. I can rub that off a little bit if I choose to. I've also taken some rope and wrapped around on the masts. I chose to do three on each, and there are about four wraps. Uh, the actual ship itself has several that are smaller, but it's just personal preference and a matter of time consumption. Those are pretty easy to do. They're easier to do if you uh, do the wrapping prior to putting the masts on the ship because then you can just rotate it around and you might notice there's a little nub there. I can snip that off. Just haven't gotten to that point yet. I had a little trouble with the farthest back mast not aligning straight so you can see I just took a little wedge out of it so that it can lean a little bit more to the right. So once it gets in place then I can stand it up more straight. I also put rope around the um, yards to hold them to the masts. I actually sand out a um, oval shape so that the mast and this will connect better. Here's the cross section of the yard, I guess is what we call it. I marked the center, put a little notch in it, and then this is kind of a rat tail file and it's about the same diameter it's a little smaller let me turn this this way and then I will just file take it part way in and then I have a little wider file that I can make that more like the pattern or the circular circumference of the mast itself. I don't get it exact, it just gives a little better fit. And um, I don't have any measurements as to where this should go as far as how high. So I've just been kind of eyeballing it. So I put it on the ship 
And like I said, if you can, if you can tie it first before you glue it, then you can maneuver it. So well, here's the piece, and I've decided I want to put it right about here. So to tie it on, I'm going to start a loop, go behind the mast, back out in front. But I really want to have two of these loops, so I'm going to cross. I don't know if you noticed, but I crossed the ropes between my fingers behind the mast. And now this one over. And that's more than enough to hold it. So I kind of line these up straight. And then I just tie a single square knot in the back. Now I'm going to try and keep that in position. Turn this over. I normally don't do it this way. I'm just doing it this way for the camera. I don't know if you can see the square knot, but it's just a simple square knot. And I'm going to pull it tight, pull it downward, and right where that knot is. I'm going to put some super glue to hold that in place. Then once that dries, I can snip off these two ends. I mean, it's partially dry, but I'll wait a little bit longer. It's better if you tie it first, then do all your rope work and get these, you know, straight like you want them. And then you can just put a dot of super glue back there and secure it better. I've discovered an error that I may have made. And if you remember when I said I was putting these platforms in place, I forgot what the letter and number of these braces were. They were all in the W series and one of the few parts sheets that I have left, I have a whole series of W8s. They're the same shapes, or very similar, as what the supports are under these, but they're very, very tiny. They would ha only work for the very back platform. I'm beginning to wonder if these smallest ones would have gone on the, uh, the aft or the very back platform and then this set would go along with this set on the main mast and the set that I put on the farthest back should have also gone on the main mast and all these little pieces would have been for the front and farthest back one. I'm going to keep them the way they are. I'm just letting you know that. You'll have to do some research online to see if you can find information on what other ships do but somewhere I messed up on that again I think it's the base of the platform I'm going to live with them the way they are